I did not return to my hotel, however. In my one brief glance into the little book, I had seen something which had bitten into my soul. Only a few words, but they had brought me very near to that queer, solitary man who had been my uncle. I dismissed Mrs. Malkin and remained in the study. There was a fitting place to read the diary he had left behind him. His personality lingered like a vapor in that study. I settled into his deep Morris chair and turned to catch the light from the single narrow window, the light, doubtless, by which he had written much of his work on entomology. That same struggling illumination played shadowy tricks with hosts of wall-crucified insects, which seemed engaged in a unified effort to crawl upward in sinuous lines. Some of their number, impaled to the ceiling itself, peered quiveringly down on the aspiring multitude. The whole house, with its crisp dead, rustling in any vagrant breeze, brought back to my mind the hand that had pinned them, one by one, on wall and ceiling and furniture. A kindly hand, I reflected, though eccentric. One not to be turned aside from its single hobby. When quiet, peering Uncle Godfrey went, there passed out another of those scientific enthusiasts, whose passion for exact truth in some one direction had extended to the bounds of human knowledge. Could not his unquestioned merits have balanced against his sin? Was it necessary to even-handed justice that he lie face to face with horror, struggling with the thing he most feared? I pondered the question still, though his body, strangely bruised, had been long at rest. The entries in the little book began with the 15th of June. Everything before that date had been torn out. There, in the room where it had been written, I read my uncle Godfrey's diary. It is done. I am trembling so that the words will hardly form under my pen. But my mind is collected. My course was for the best. Suppose I had married her. She would have been unwilling to live in this house. At the outset, her wishes would have come between me and my work, and that would have been only the beginning. As a married man, I could not have concentrated properly. I could not have surrounded myself with the atmosphere indispensable to the writing of my book. My scientific message would never have been delivered. As it is, though my heart is sore, I shall stifle these memories in work. I wish I had been more gentle with her, especially when she sank to her knees before me tonight. She kissed my hand. I should not have repulsed her so roughly. In particular, my words could have been better chosen. I said to her bitterly, Get up and don't nuzzle my hand like a dog. She rose without a word and left me. How was I to know that within an hour I am largely to blame? Yet, had I taken any other course afterward than the one I did, the authorities would have misunderstood. Again, there followed a space from which the sheets had been torn. But from the 16th of July, all the pages were intact. Something had come over the writing, too. It was still precise and clear, my Uncle Godfrey's characteristic hand. But the letters were less firm. As the entries approached the end, this difference became still more marked. Here follows, then, the whole of his story, or as much of it as will ever be known. I shall let his words speak for him, without further interruption. My nerves are becoming more seriously affected. If certain annoyances do not shortly cease, I shall be obliged to procure medical advice. To be more specific, 
I find myself at times obsessed by an almost uncontrollable desire to descend to the cellar and lift the slab over the old well. I never have yielded to the impulse, but it has persisted for minutes together with such intensity that I have had to put work aside and literally hold myself down in my chair. This insane desire comes only in the dead of night, when its disquieting effect is heightened by the various noises peculiar to the house. For instance, there often is a draft of air along the hallways, which causes a rustling among the specimens impaled on the walls. Lately, too, there have been other nocturnal sounds, strongly suggestive of the busy clamor of rats and mice. This calls for investigation. I have been at considerable expense to make the house proof against rodents, which might destroy some of my best specimens. If some structural defect has opened the way for them, the situation must be corrected at once. July 17th. The foundations and cellar were examined today by a workman. He stated positively that there is no place for ingress for rodents. He contented himself with looking at the slab over the old well, without lifting it. July 19th. While I was sitting in the chair, late last night, writing, the impulse to descend to the cellar suddenly came upon me with tremendous insistence. I yielded, which perhaps was as well. For at least I satisfied myself that the disquiet which possesses me has no external cause, 